So for this first problem, we're trying to determine if the function models exponential growth or decay. And just like we looked at in the introduction video, we're basically focusing on the base of our exponential expression. Now this number out in front, that's essentially the starting value. Since notice, if you plug in zero for x, that you get 7 thirds times 2 to the 0, but that's just 1. So you get 7 thirds. In fact, for any exponential function, let's say you have a times by b to the x power, when you plug in 0, you get a times b to the 0, and anything to the 0 power is 1, so this is just a. So whatever number is multiplied by your exponential expression here, whatever it is, 2 to the x in this case, this number is essentially the starting value when the x value, or a lot of times these model time, when that is equal to 0. So the 7 thirds is not going to affect whether it's growth or decay, or whatever the number is out in front, it doesn't affect whether the function will go up or whether it will go down moving forward. What matters for that is the base of the exponential expression. And in this case, it's a number greater than one. If it was a fraction, that would be decay, but since it's bigger than one, we're looking at growth here. So that's certainly one way to determine whether it's growth or decay since B in this general expression, this is greater than one, and so that's going to be growth. But if b was a fraction, if it was between zero and one, that will be decay. So that's one way to determine the answer here. The other way is to just plug in values and see what happens. So we already looked at when x is zero, it's just 7 thirds. But if we look at when x is 1, so now we have 2 to the first, so we're going to multiply 7 thirds by 2, so that's 14 thirds. If we plug in 2, we have 2 squared, which is 4, so you have 4 times 7 thirds, which is now 28 over 3. And as x increases, the y value will get bigger and bigger. If we we're looking at decay, it would get smaller and smaller. So now, with this information, let's keep moving on these. We'll do three more example problems. And once you get the hang of these, they're fairly quick. So notice this one, we're looking at the base of our exponential expression, and it's a fraction. So because this is a fraction, and it's a positive exponent, that is important. If the exponent is negative, that changes the pattern a little bit. So since we have a fraction for our base, this is going to be decay. And again, you can see this by just plugging in different values. In this case, we have t and our function, f of t. So if we plug in 0, 3 sevenths to the 0 power is just 1. So you get 5. This number, remember, is always your starting value at, in this case, time 0. If we plug in 1, you get 3 sevenths to the first, which is just 3 sevenths, times by 5. And 5 times 3 sevenths would be 15 over 7, which is less than 5. If we plug in 2, you get 3 sevenths squared, which is 9 49. So this becomes 5 times 9 over 49, which would simplify to 45 over 49. And now we're less than 1. So this number is slightly bigger than 2. So it's going from 5 to something bigger than 2 to something less than 1. And it will continue decreasing as t increases. So again, this is decay, and there's two different ways you can look at it. You can use the table, or you can just look at whether or not this is a fraction or a number bigger than one. Let's do another example. And we need to know the shape of the graph, or what the function looks like when you graph it. And again, notice the base here. And in this case, our base is greater than one. So that indicates we're looking at exponential growth. And growth always increases for its y value or its function value as, in this case, the t value gets larger and larger. So as t increases, the function value increases as well. And so that's indicative of growth. Whereas decay is the opposite. As t increases, the function value 
decreases. So this one we can label as decay. And we'll look at one final question here. So what is the shape of the graph of the function? We have g of x, 3 halves times 2 thirds to the x. So notice we have a fraction here. And so this is going to be decay, which we know decreases as the x value increases. So as x gets bigger and bigger, the function value gets smaller and smaller. But if you're unsure about these, just like the first two problems, make a quick table and see what happens. So when we plug in 0, it's always going to be whatever this value is multiplied by our exponential expression. Since plugging in 0, we get 2 thirds to the 0, which is just 1. So that's just equal to 3 halves, or 1.5. If we plug in 1, we get 3 halves times 2 thirds to the first, which is just 2 thirds. And multiplying these together, since they're reciprocals, this is equal to 1. And notice we went from 1.5 to 1, so it's already decreasing. And if we plug in 2, we get 2 thirds squared, which is 4 ninths. So you get 3 halves times by 4 over 9. Multiplying straight across, you get 12 over 18, which is 2 thirds. So now we're less than 1. And as the x value increases, this number, this function value, is going to get smaller and smaller. And so if you really want, you can plot these points by hand, but you're going to get a graph that decreases over time in this exponential decay fashion.